Yeah. Um, so hi, I'm Brad. I'm currently, uh, as you said, an, an engineer at uh, Google, working mostly in machine learning and uh, specifically in developing uh, machine learning experiences for developers and um, working a lot in just improving developer experiences in terms of the, the tools that we have, uh, specifically in the realms of machine learning um, and some big data as well. So a lot of that involves teaching developers, uh, providing documentation and uh, tutorials, going and speaking, and just really making sure that people who are using machine learning are getting the best experience that they, they can. Um, and so a little bit of to how I got here. So I've been working as an engineer for a little over three years at this point. Uh, and this has included traditional software engineering roles, uh, data engineering roles, a bit of machine learning engineering as well. Um, and I went to school for math and computer science. Um, and now, yeah, now I'm at Google. In learning subject, what do you think, what are the challenges associated with it? Sure. So in terms of, practical algorithms nowadays there's actually no shortage of them and i think a lot of the issues nowadays come in uh some of the skills surrounding the machine learning aspects such as the data um there's a lot of issues nowadays in terms of data privacy data fairness and making sure that you have good and unbiased data uh a lot of the the catch all about machine learning models is that they really are only at the end of the day, you can have a brilliant model, but they're only the, the models only going to be as good as the data that is trained on. So you need to make sure that you, you don't have bias in your data and that you are, you know, accurately representing, uh, you know, what, what you're trying to have the model accomplish. And so there's, there's no shortage of uh, issues of this out there. I remember a couple of years ago on, Twitter, I, I, I can't remember the year, I think it was maybe 2015, uh, Twitter released a bot that would simply start tweeting based on the interactions that it had with people on Twitter. And very quickly, the, the, the bot actually turned very racist and was, or I should say that the output of the, of the bot was very racist and obviously not okay and not something that we want running around on Twitter. So their Twitter had to take it down, but they, the idea was they, the, the data that it was trained on was not clean enough to be able to, or I, I guess maybe not that the data wasn't clean enough, but they, they weren't necessarily expecting this to be the case. And there's very few scenarios where you would want something like that to happen. So you, you just need to make sure that, you're, that the models you're creating are safe, that they're not harmful, that they're not mis representing certain groups of people or over-representing other groups of people. Um, and yeah, and I, I think that that's not an easy problem. And I think that there are, there are academic researchers out there who are spending a hundred percent of their time just on those problems, not necessarily on improving the models, uh, but just making sure that there's ways to, well, I guess you could argue that that is a way to, to improve the model, but yeah, I, I, like I said, a lot of it really does come from the data. Um, and also in, in terms of, uh, model explainability. So if you know as these models uh, and then machine learning in and of itself is becoming more prevalent in society i mean it already is but it's only getting it's only becoming more and more uh widespread the idea is let's say that a model like like this this robot uh that or this bot that was on twitter that was making the racist remarks let's say that that ends up uh let's say there's a court case on that and the you know the the uh uh, let's say Twitter gets a peanut in terms of uh, like asking, why did this model do this? Like, what, why, why did you have a racist robot running around on the internet? And the ability to actually explain what the model was doing is very important in that case. And in a lot of instances, that's very hard to do, especially in the realm of deep learning. If you actually were to dive into many of these models, it just looks like a bunch of numbers, and it's, which means absolutely nothing to any human observer. But to the model, it makes perfect sense, which is what we would expect. But it's very hard to actually explain to someone why the model made the choices that it made at a low level. Um, it's easy to do at a high level, but not at a low level. And I think that that's going to become um, very important in the future. I also think uh, on a little, uh, I don't want to, yeah, I guess on, on a little bit more of a technical side, um, there is the issue of model hosting. So in the realm of machine learning and being a machine learning engineer, I think one common misconception about being a machine learning engineer is that you are building models all day. You are not. And that 
depending on the role can range anywhere from you know five percent of your work to let's say 40 percent of your work a lot of the work actually comes from just being able to host that model and clean the data and build the pipeline for the actual machine learning system because let's say you wanted to create um let's let's say we wanted to create a, a, a phone app that could take a picture of something and determine whether it was, uh, that takes a picture of, yeah, an apple and determine, or uh, takes a picture of a fruit. It tries to determine what type of fruit it is. Is it an apple, a banana, an orange? Uh, a lot of the work involved in that actually doesn't come from the model, but actually setting up the infrastructure for the app and being able to, let's say we're doing this, yeah, on an iPhone, you know, being able to actually write the app itself and having the proper front end and making sure that it interacts correctly with the operating system and being able to use the internal camera API and also being able to run the model itself on the device, which nowadays there are a lot of technique or a lot of libraries out there to do that, specifically things like CoreML and TensorFlow Lite. Um, but a, a lot of the work just surrounding hosting the model and getting the model into, a, into an application where it's useful um, is, a very, um, is very tricky. But I think that there's, a, that, that's, you know, I, I went pretty deep into those, but I do think that uh, a lot of the model related things in terms of just the, the accuracy of these models is looking pretty well. And as I mentioned before, you know, deep learning is the state of the art on a lot of different cases. And these models are, a lot of these models are operating at near human or superior uh, levels, which is really exciting, which allows, uh, which, you know, you, you might feel more comfortable removing the human from the, uh, uh, from the loop in a lot of these cases, but you still need some oversight. Um, and yeah, there's a, there's a lot of cool things going on, but there's definitely some, uh, a lot of continued work that will not be solved in, you know, anytime soon and just will continue to need more work. Wow. You know, Brad, what, Brad, we are very keen to know about, you know, uh, your most in interesting project uh, of machine learning that you have undertaken till now sure so the, uh I, I think that the, the the most interesting to me uh it, this might not be super helpful but I'll, I'll mention this anyway and then i'll mention a more i guess technical one is actually in terms of teaching uh people machine learning which is where which is a lot of what i'm doing now and just being able to figure out how to get more people interested in the subject uh, that, that i should say there are a lot of people interested but just in terms of how to get people more interested in how to get the outreach out there and you know maybe even some of the answers to these questions uh out to more people so doing things like this webinar you know are really awesome to me and are very helpful uh for both my mission and also in getting other people really interested and excited in working in the field um but in terms of uh more traditional algorithmic building uh, things of that nature i would definitely say a project that i i once worked on that dealt with summarizing uh, large bodies of text into smaller bodies of text and being able to parse the document and or the you know the various amounts of strings that were available and providing just a more succinct summarization uh if i was reading an article about let's say uh you know, it's uh, one of the presidential candidates or it's someone, someone announced that they're running for president in the United States. Um, that's, you know, most of those articles are, you know, hundreds of, if not thousands of characters long, but at the end of the day, you, you know, you may just care, oh, such and such is now a presidential candidate for 2020. Um, and so building an algorithm that can read all that and then just determine that that is the summarization, just as I might say if someone asked me what is the summary of this article um that was a lot of fun and that used a, a lot of deep learning uh, techniques and just training a model to do that was definitely very challenging um, and at the time something i had not worked a whole lot on so that was really cool and i thought that that was really fun wow that was really interesting so uh, what education background or experience or I would say any certification uh, related to course is needed to get started in uh, this machine learning field. Sure. So also, very, so this is a great question. I do think that, uh, so th there's a couple ways to approach going about getting started in the, you know, getting a job in machine learning. So one way to do it is to go to school, get a master's degree, get a PhD and, you know, you, you'll definitely be able to get a job that way. From what I've seen, there are still a lot of companies that do require PhDs, if not masters, uh, to break into the field. But I do think that there are a lot that are moving away, especially um, 
as access to knowledge in the machine learning realm is becoming so much more accessible, uh, I personally don't think that you need that higher level to be able to really provide value to an organization. Um, I do think that a lot of these online classes, and people have completely different opinions on this, but I do think that these online classes are providing a lot of real value in terms of getting people just up and running with the basics. Um, you will still have to build some of these models on your own time and work on some projects to really be able to understand how to build this stuff. Because at the end of the day, the best way to really get, um, uh, to get started on anything. And I actually meant to add this earlier uh, in terms of things that you should uh, do. But like uh, the only way to learn anything, in my opinion, is just to do it. So you just need to be building models and you just need to be reading, let's say, research papers and taking these classes. And sure, you can do that in an advanced, uh, you know, in an academic setting as a, such as a you know, graduate degree, a master's degree, a PhD degree. But at the end of the day, the, all of this stuff is freely available to you. So you don't need to, you know, you don't need permission to just go on archive, which is where um, archive is the archive.org is where um, machine learning research is most, most machine learning research is published. That is completely free. And there no, you don't need anyone's permission to just go and start reading this stuff. And if you have any questions about these things, you know, you can often reach out to the author of the paper. You can post on, uh, you know, any online forum and say, or, you know, so I know Reddit has a, has a subreddit for, uh, research papers and if you have any questions, you know, people are more than happy to help. So you, you definitely don't need that advanced degree. Uh, it doesn't hurt, but you also have the trade-off of do I want to spend all this time at graduate school versus just getting into the field and teaching this stuff on my own or even on this, you know, after, you know, after hours if you're work if you're not working in machine learning currently. Uh, so I'll, I'll speak specifically to someone who is, let's say, a, so a traditional software engineer, or I shouldn't say traditional, but someone like who's, who's um, an engineer that's not in machine learning, and they're interested in learning about machine learning, then you can learn it after work, or you can see if you have colleagues at your company that are working on this stuff already, and you might be interested in learning a bit more about how to get into it. Um, just talk to them and pick their brain and work on these models you know, after hours, and then ask them if they can help you out. Um, with anything in terms of otherwise uh, so, so outside of let's say getting an advanced degree um, I, I can't think of any certification off of the top of my head I mean these these Coursera courses do technically give you a certification um, I don't know that having that certification in and of itself means much to a lot of employers um, that's where I'm not entirely sure I think it's more just whether or not you have the you know have the know-how and you know are able to show it either in an interview or just in projects that you worked on that you're doing interesting things um and just yeah yeah i you know I, again I, I think that you can go get an advanced degree but i don't think you necessarily need to i think the most important thing is that you just start building models uh do it on the side uh, for what it's worth i don't have an advanced degree i i have i only have um a four-year degree from a, a, a university in the united states and uh, you know, I'm working in the field. So I think having an undergraduate degree as a minimum would probably help, uh, especially for, for, and that's for many reasons, but I know that there are a lot of engineers out there uh, who don't necessarily have degrees and just self-taught themselves programming and machine learning and all, this sorts of, all these sorts of things that you need and you know, got, them, got them a job. 